was going to tell you a little about by my, myself. Um, my daughter is actually here with me today, so she's sitting up here. <laughs> and she's uh, going on seven in another week, so um, it's great. Uh, so I've been a single mom the whole time. I um, have a family of seven siblings. I have five brothers and one sister. And unfortunately, we've been separated. So um, that's a little bit about my life <laughs> right there. But uh, when I grew up, I grew up in poverty. My mother was uh, schizophrenic. My dad was an alcoholic. So growing up, it was really abusive. And, and I was also sexually abused throughout most of my life until I was about 10 years old until they finally took me into foster care and where it was just me and my youngest brother. And then my new foster family, she was also very abusive and worked us really hard and said that we were never gonna make it. We were gonna end up just like our parents. And then two days after, before I graduated, or it was actually two days after I graduated, she kicked me out of the house and dropped me off at a job course center in Sacramento with just a suitcase of clothing. So with no support, no family. I, I did the best that I could. I worked and worked really hard and I actually met my daughter's dad through it and didn't realize how that was gonna be another struggle for myself. He ended up being very abusive. My daughter thankfully doesn't remember that because it was my choice to leave after she was born. If not for me, it was for her. I couldn't live knowing that she was gonna end up in a really bad situation the way I did. So it took me to make that change. And here we are today and I know that we're doing it. I try and stay positive throughout it all and even working many jobs and trying to work as hard as we could. I knew that I needed to do more than just that. And then when I left her dad and I became homeless, I chose to, I just let, lived in my car for a couple days and then in a hotel. And I got in contact with my sister after 12 years and she came down from Oregon and picked me up. And little did I know that she was also a drug addict. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's a learning experience. You, it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I learned to feel really bad for my sister because she didn't have the opportunity, I feel like I did. I wanted to make a change for myself and she felt that she needed to be stuck. And she ended up losing her kids and her family because of her addiction. And up till this day, I don't even know where she is. But when I moved up here, I ended up getting an apartment. I found another job. And through it, I was struggling to fight for custody with my daughter, the visitations. But we still managed, and I'm still doing that today. It's still hard, but we're getting there. And then, the last job I just had, it just wasn't making enough money, and I decided, you know what, I'm going back to school. No more excuses for myself. <laughs> as much as I wanted to, I was really scared, and so I did it. I enrolled at Roe Community College, and it was a great place. There was people of all ages there, so I didn't feel bad about going back to school at the age that I am, which I don't want to tell you guys. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm young, so it's okay. <laughs> but I went back to school, and it was a good example for my daughter. And she's like, you know, Mom, I'm going to go to school just like you. And that made me feel so good to hear her say that, because education is so very important. I was so blessed to even graduate from high school that I felt like, oh, I'm going to do so much more with my life. <laughs> and I still believe that, and that if I can do it, anybody can, no matter what situation you're in, no matter if you've been abused or neglected, there's always hope. And I want to be an example for everyone who felt that they were in that position, that they had no one to turn to, and they had nothing left to life, but they do. And I felt every day that I was just blessed to even be here and to have my little girl, because without her, I don't know what I could do, <laughs> you know? But we're here. And I'm working now with a great organization, which is Southern Oregon Head Start. And through them, it really made me want to be a teacher. I love the fact that I get to work with children that were just like me. They're in 
foster care that were abused and neglected. And with this award that I have just received, which I was very surprised, <laughs> I knew never have thought in a million years I could win anything, will help me gain my goal to be a teacher. I'm still working on my associates, but I should be finished, hopefully by next June. That is my goal if I cram hard enough. And then hopefully go on to my, the four-year college to get my master's degree.